Good day everyone. So we are Group 6 and we are here to present to you the organization and analysis of assessment data from alternative method. So first, in order to analyze, present, and select the results of alternative assessment, you need to know how to use and interpret results of descriptive and inferential statistics. So we, we have here uh, alternative assessment. So what are these alternative assessments? So these are the form of student performance grading that allows for more holistic approach of student assessment. Descriptive statistics, these are descriptive coefficient that summarize a given data or a set. Inferential statistics, this allows you to make predictions or inferences from that so how do we quantify rubrics? So in creation of rubrics, there are scales that represents the degree of performance. So degree of performance, this refers to the range from high to low degree of proficiency. So we have here examples. The first example that shows degree of proficiency is poor, needs improvement, good, very good. So the highest level or the highest degree of proficiency is very good, which is equivalent to four points. And the lowest degree of proficiency is poor which is equivalent to one point so we have two more examples which is minimal partial complete emerging developing and achieving so the points depend on the quality of behavior shown by the learner's performance so the reliability of the points can be determined if there is consistency of rating among two or more observers so how do we measure the consistency of rating we use the Kendall's coefficient of concordance, which is used to test the agreement among raters. So here is the example. So if a performance task was demonstrated by five students and there are three raters, the rubric uses a scale of one to four, where four is the highest and one is the lowest. So we have here five demonstration na nagrepresent as A, B, C, D, E, and we have three raters or three observers. So, Rater 1, Rater 2, Rater 3, and the sum of the ratings of the three observers. So, the equivalent of uh, sum of ratings of letter A is 11, B is 8, then C, 11, D, 8, and E is 4. So, yung mean ng sum of ratings is kinukuha siya by adding up all the sum of the ratings, then divided ko ilan sila. And then, yung D um, magbibase tayo sa mean of sum of ratings, which is 8.4. Ima-minus lang natin sa, sa each of the five demonstrations. So, for example, um, 8.4 minus 11 is equals to 2.6. 8.4 minus 8 is equals to negative 0.4 and so on and so forth. Tapos, yung D squared, ito naman is yung in-squared lang natin yung D. So, for example, 2.6. So, 2.6 squared is equals to 6.76, negative 0.4 is equivalent to 0.16, and so on and so forth. So, we have here summation of d squared. So, paano natin kinukuha yung summation of d squared? Just to add all the d squared of each demonstration. So, what is the Kendall's coefficient? So, we have here the formula W is equals to 12 times the summation of d squared over n squared times n times n squared minus 1. So, yung 12, yun yung nag-represent ng um, equivalent ng pag pinag natin yung highest degree of proficiency, which is 4. So, nire-rate ng mga observers na 4 yung pinaka-highest score. So, yung general natin na um, average is yung 12. So, we have also the summation of d squared. So, nakita natin sa table na ang equivalent ng summation of d squared is 33.2 over m squared. So, yung m represents the number of waiters. Then, yung n represents the number of demonstrations. So, we have three raters and we have five demonstrations. So, let's proceed now to the solution. So, 12 times 33.2 over 3 squared times 5 times 5 squared minus 1. So, yung answer daw niya is yung 0 0.37 na pag round off ay 0 0.38. So, Kendall's coefficient is 0.38 is an estimation of the agreement of the three raters in five demonstration. So, there is moderate concordance among the three raters 
because the coefficient is far from 1. So, yun pala is, we therefore conclude that if Kendall's coefficient is far from 1, so, there is moderate concordance or agreement among the readers or observers. Um, next is, how do we quantify results from scales and checklists? Um, bigay mo na natin kung ano yung scales. Scales could be measure of non-cognitive dimension of students' behavior. When the items in the scale are answered by the students, the response format quantifies the behavior measured by the scale. And the types of response format vary depending on the nature of the behavior measured. Um, yung una, maaari natin malaman or masukat ang resulta ng portfolio gamit ang scales at checklist. Um, ang scale ay pinagbabatayan kung ano bang behavior ng bata towards dun sa portfolio na yun. And dito nasusukat, nasusukat ang non-cognitive non dimension ng bata or ang kanyang behavior. Ang mga nakalagay na description sa skill na pinili ng estudyante ay magkakuantify sa behavior nila. Tapos, ang response ng bata ay nag-iiba depende sa minimeasure ng behavior. Um, yung scale ay may dalawang may dalawa siyang types. Yung una ay yung Likert scale, tapos yung um, nan yung ay, yung verbal pre frequency scale. Ano ba yung ano? Yung Likert. Used to measure students' favorability and unfavorability toward a certain object. Tapos, yung yung verbal frequency scale uh, used to measure how often a habit is done. Yung, yung Likert scale, dito inaalam kung pabor ba or di pabor yung estudyante sa isang senaryo o pangyayari. Tapos, yung verbal naman is sinusukat nito kung kung gano'n mo kadalas ginagawa yung isang gawain.